Yo, what up, what up? Welcome back. I'm your host, B. Ryan. Co-host, J. Bell. And this is Final, Final Thoughts. Thoughts. Today's topic, the Supreme Court is trash. Two out of ten. Don't recommend. Let's check it out. We begin tonight with that U.S. Supreme Court ruling saying that private religious schools cannot be excluded from a program that pays tuition for students in more rural areas of our state. Before we get to the nuts and bolts of the ruling, this is how the program works. For example, Town A is a town like many in Maine. It has both an elementary and a middle school, but no high school. Town B next door does have one, so the main program allows Town A to use state money to pay for a student to go to that high school. But if a family in Town A wants to send their teenager to a private religious school in Town C, the state would not pay for it. Today's 6-3 ruling by the court says that is religious discrimination. And now this means families can have their child's tuition covered at a religious school of their choosing as long as that school accepts state funds from the program. The First Amendment, or I'm sorry, the court here saying that the First Amendment guaranteed that this coach could in fact pray on the 50-yard line after games. So the Supreme Court saying here in a 6-3 opinion that this high school out in Washington State violated both the free speech of this coach uh, and also the free exercise clause when they suspended him after he wouldn't stop praying on the 50-yard line. This school had argued that it violated uh, their school policies, that they were worried about coercion of students, and they were also worried about violating the endorsement clause of the Constitution, saying that the government can't endorse religion. They said by continuing to allow the coach to pray on the 50-yard line, they were in jeopardy of violating that clause. So they suspended the coach, and that's what set off this litigation, that for years this coach has gone through the lower courts that all ruled against him. But today, the Supreme Court ruling in favor of the coach here, saying that he should have been allowed to pray on the 50-yard line. It was something that the facts were somewhat disputed here. The school had said that they had offered him alternate accommodations to maybe pray in an area that wasn't so public-facing, because the problem, the school argued, was that when the coach went to the 50-yard line, some of the students, some of the players, they felt inclined to follow him, whether or not that, that amounted to coercion or not. It was this public um, airing of this coach's religious preferences that the school was most concerned about. But now the court reiterating that this was in fact personal speech from the coach and he had every right to do it on the 50 yard line. Supreme Court is at it again, y'all. They are wildin'. They, yeah, they wildin', bro. 100%. All of their rulings suck. I hate it. I hate it here! I hate it. All day. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't even know where we want to even start with this. Like, how do you want to? How do you want to well, tackle this? Well, cause... so we all know about <laughs> the the loss of Roe versus Wade, right? That's Roe v. Wade overturned. Everybody's talking about it, right? We yeah. we understand the gravity of that, right? Yeah. But maybe you didn't hear about the Supreme Court's next few rulings that now they are chipping away at the separation of state and church. So, yeah, so now we got um, where the schools are being funded by the state, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, right, private right, schools, right, right. private schools are being funded by the state. So if y'all didn't know of the situations, there are two separate situations that have happened. Yeah. Uh, one was a a uh, football coach was kneeling and praying on the 50-yard line after football games, right? Now, normally this wouldn't be much of an issue, but this football coach works for a public school. And as we know, in our in the uh, First Amendment, you know, no uh, religion is supposed to be uh, established over another. Right. So within that, the staff and the principal asked the coach not to pray on the 50-yard line after a game. They offered him other places that he could pray so that they weren't infringing on his rights because... 
a part of the First Amendment is you cannot, you know, uh, infringe on anyone's rights to celebrate their religion. Their religion. Right. Right. So they offered him other places for him to pray. He declined and he continued to pray on the 50 yard line after every game. Normally, this would be unacceptable, right? But our Supreme Court decided that this is okay and he is allowed to pray on the 50 yard line, no matter if that coerces anyone else to join him or makes anyone feel left out or anything like that, he can do that. That's fine, apparently. Yeah, apparently, you, um, I think it's uh, six people that, that are making these decisions, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think, I, I think, I, I think all of them are Catholics. Catholics. Probably so, I'm not sure. Um, more than likely, yeah. At the very least, very they're Christians. Anyway. Yeah, 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 they're Christians so, at that. Yeah. So, of course, you want <laughs> to see your religion being practiced and... Hallelujah! Practiced and stuff yeah. like that. You you know, that's Express just... rest in, in front of everybody. Yeah. Right? That's the whole point. Like, you spread... Right, it's right. to proselytize. It's to, you know, spread. Go from here to there. I have something great to tell everyone. Yes. That's just yes. how Christianity has been for quite some time and yeah. in many different of its uh yeah. Whatever iteration it is. Yeah, yeah. The point of it is to spread. To spread the good that's news. It. To spread the word. Yeah. Right. That's why they go on missions. Exactly. To spread the word. Right. And I think that the, the coach that's kneeling at the... the the sideline i think that's exactly what he's doing Mm -hmm. even though it's not like he's going to a person and saying it to a person like believe in Mm -hmm. whatever i believe in Mm -hmm. but that's the simple act of it like you said people see you doing it Mm -hmm. and they might want to join Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff if it's not supposed to be something that you do then why do it? Like, you can pray before you get out to the field. You you can do this while you're having a meal. You can do this, <laughs> you can do this before drill. Yeah. I don't want to sound like Dr. Seuss, but yeah. <laughs> On a boat in the moat while you float. That's called motherfucking bars, nigga. It doesn't matter. The hey, problem yeah. is that he is a coach working at a public school. Yeah. Right? So... To be clear, we don't have an issue with somebody, you know, praying. No. That that doesn't really matter. The 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 problem is that you're you is when you do it, where you do it, and how, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, the the separation of church and state exists for a reason. You know, if you're holding a public office or you're a principal, this is why we don't have school prayers over loudspeakers anymore, right? Yeah. Because what does that do? That establishes one religion over another. So if you are a Christian and you're praying on a 50 yard line after every game, it's kind of like you are representing your school now, even though this school isn't supposed to be represented in that way. So it's not really about this person in particular, it's about what and who they represent. And when you're a coach, you're representing the school right now. Yeah. So it's, and that, and that's part of the issue is that the Supreme Court saw it as like, oh, this is a private individual praying nah, come on. after every game, so it's okay. Nothing to see here, please. He's free to express how he feels in his in his religion. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you. You uh, you work for a place, you go out, get wasted, have a fight and all that kind of stuff. I guarantee you, your job is going to catch up, get wind of it, and fire you because you're a representative of their brand. You have to protect the brand. <laughs> Shout out to Ray for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and and a lot of a lot of things uh, can arise from this situation like how far are we going to go with it if we're going to let that go then what else are we going to let go right you know that's the that's kind of some of the things that i worry that Mm. we're letting some of the small things go and then it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and now we and now we're all in church (laughs) 
<laughs> Everywhere you go, <laughs> all the time. Now, church, now. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know you, you had church today. Oh yeah, you do. baby. You do. You, do. you, you gonna come to church because church is here. <laughs> I, because I'm here, <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's that situation. Yeah. Anyway, it's for I think for us, it's it's pretty much uh, plain as day. It's not that we don't want or we're against somebody praying in public. That's not the issue. It's that where you work, when and uh, the job that you do, these things can sometimes contradict each other. They can mm -hmm. butt heads up and up against each other. It's fine to be a Christian and a coach, but mm -hmm. understand that when you work for a public school, these things sometimes can't align with each other. Sometimes you have to keep your Christianity in check. If you work at a public school, you can't lead your, your classroom in uh, the, uh, the uh, our father. You right. can't do that. Sorry, not sorry. Nope. Sorry. Because it's not everybody's father. Right. Out of Pepe. You know, they might be your father and your belief in your yeah. religion, but they have people that are, that are other, uh, other things than Christian. You know that's crazy? Do that. That's cap. <laughs> I, I accuse I you of capping. <laughs> who, who, who the fuck? I didn't know that. <laughs> Come on, man. But the, the, that's one of the issues. The second Supreme Court uh, case was... Uh, situation where there's a town in in Maine, right? Yeah. A small town in Maine that has an elementary school and a middle school, but they don't have a high school, right? So what ends up happening is whoever goes whoever lives in this town, the state pays for them to go to public school in another town, right? Because that town doesn't have a high school. Yeah. Makes sense, right? So what ends up happening is you have a family that they want to go to a private religious school in another town. And originally, the state doesn't pay for that. Right. If, you go to a, if you go to a religious school, the state does not fund that, even though your town doesn't have a high school. Why? Separation of church and state. Yeah, it's a private institution. Right. Yeah. But... The Supreme Court has now overturned that ruling, and now even if there's no other alternative, or even if there is an alternative, I'm sorry, even if there is a high school alternative in another state, now they can pay for a child to go to a religious school in another state. That's that situation. How do we feel about that? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hate it. Two thumbs down. Hated it. I don't like it. Get it Trash. Out of here. Two out of ten. Two Would out not of ten. recommend. Rotten tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-two percent or so. <laughs> like man, like we, like at this point, I feel like we're about to become a theocracy. Like call me crazy, and some people do. Um, <laughs> But I feel like because we have the religious right in charge that they're going to constantly push, you know, religious incentives and stuff like that for other for other Christians to, you know, take advantage of. And that's what exactly what this is. They're going to take advantage of that situation. The state should not be paying for private school. It's mm -hmm. private school for a reason. And that's why they're public state schools for a reason you know like public city all of this is from the state the funds come from the state so why exactly are we doing this we understand the concept of ch separation of church and state right i don't know do we that's right you don't know it doesn't I'm, seem I'm, like I'm, we I'm do saying, right <laughs> yeah, i don't think most of us do i think i think especially the Super religious feel this is like this is getting back to how it should be for whatever reason. Like, 
And this, this is this is our manifest destiny. <laughs> manifest destiny. No, no, stop. This... Oh, come on now, cut it out. Stop. <laughs> no, this is not. This shouldn't be a thing. Only and once again, you know, we we're not trying to attack anybody or tell you what school you should go to, but we're trying to attack. The truth is. State funds should not go to religious schools. That's not. We we've we've discussed this already. Yeah. This is a, <laughs> this is many many years ago. Yeah. A real long time ago. Feel me. Yeah. We talked about the separation of church and state and why it's a good thing. Why it needs to happen, because you know Britain and all of them. We saw what state and church together can do. And when we put these things together, always, no matter what, one religion gets lifted above the other ones. So, I'm sorry. I know it sucks that you don't have a high school in your in your town, but you're gonna have to go to this public school in another town. Or, or your family could pay for the private school that you're going to instead of using state funds to get it done. Yeah. How about that? You know, it's just a mm -hmm. thought. It's possible. It's just a thought. And, right. and you know, if you're a religious person that's watching this show and you're just like, hey, you guys are just... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so how would you feel if the Muslim majority ruled? How would you feel about that? Like, I'm just asking questions here, okay? If they started passing Sharia law, how would you feel about that? Hmm? Are we going to always just say, oh, well, you know, Christianity is better than those guys. Those guys are barbarics, barbarics, they're barbarians and all that kind of stuff. None of that matters. The point of it all is that you can't be this oppressive force that's pushing your views and beliefs on everyone else. I have my own views and beliefs, but I'm not trying to make it the law. I am the law. I'm trying to I'm not trying to influence the state into doing something that that uh makes me feel better about my religion and, <clears throat> and and my family and all this kind of stuff govern yourself accordingly but stay out of state business stay out of you know like the yeah. supreme court you all can be christians you all can be whatever you want to be but your belief should not be law it shouldn't affect anything else outside of your household and your church or wherever you serve your God. Oh, your God. Basically, it's pretty straightforward, I think. It's pretty simple to understand. Uh, for some reason, we lose track of what the separation of church and state is supposed to be. And... We're too old for this. Yeah. This is, <laughs> you know, if, if we want separation of church and state and we understand what it means, then this is a part of it. We yeah. have to accept the negative parts of it that come our way, right? right. If yeah. you are of a specific religion, your religion isn't receiving government handouts, you have to be comfortable with that because you get to express your religion, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that no other religion is being, being put forth in front of, of, of you, right? Yeah. That's part of it. That we don't say, hey, everybody pray, every, everybody do 10 Hail Marys uh, before every ball game, right? Because we will be promoting a specific religion. Yeah. This, is, this is why we don't send money to, to any other type of church or temple, because we will be promoting a religion over others. This, this, is, the, this is what happens. This is, what need, this is the way it needs to be. So, just think about that in regards to this particular topic. But, you have any final thoughts? Yeah, my, my final thoughts is that if <clears throat> this were happening to you, you wouldn't like it. If, like I said before, if, if let's just say if it was Jewish people in, in their ways, like you have to eat kosher and you have to, uh, you can't use electricity or do work on a certain day on a Sabbath day and stuff like that. If that type of stuff was passed into law, would you be okay with that? 
would you be okay with a different religion and their their customs and stuff like that being in your schools would you be okay with that mm -hmm. because if we're trying to blur the line between separation of church and state we have to accept that we have to accept any kind of possibility it just happens to be christianity you know christians that mm -hmm. are in power but what if it wasn't what if it was some other six other people who had a different religion and the same religion and you seen them as a christian passing laws and changing constitutional rights overturning const constitutional rights that fits their beliefs you as a christian will be upset and i would be upset with you because that's not how it's supposed to be like he said many years ago we already established that it's not supposed <laughs> to i mean like hundreds of years a long, ago. A long time ago. A real long time ago. <laughs> Feel me. Feel me. You. <laughs> and we need to get back to keeping it separate. Nobody here is down in any religion. Practice it as freely as you want. Go to that public school and be a public school student. You can pray to yourself or whatever, whatever. But if you are a family, like a, the family that was on the video, and they, you want your kids or other people's kids to experience, they need to just pay for the, the, the private school. And they could love God or whoever they worship as much as they want. But don't force other people to accept this stuff, the, to accept what you believe. And don't use the state, the state's money to, like the Supreme Court, don't use the state's money to, you know, supply this kind of stuff. Like, really? Seriously? Seriously. Yeah. That was my final thoughts. You got any? Uh, my final thoughts is what he said. Basically, the in summation, the easiest way to see if your standards hold true is to apply them in a different perspective. Like you said, like, would you be okay if this... If it was a Muslim man kneeling on a 50 yard line mm -hmm. praying and then other students came around him to join him in his prayer, would you be okay with that, right? Would you be okay with us funding uh, a mosque with state money? Mm -hmm. Would you be all right with that? <laughs> if you wouldn't be all right with that, then shut the hell up and take and understand that these two things are separate for a reason. This is exactly why they are separate. And the thing is, they have organizations that come out to demonstrate this. Like, uh, I think it's the the Satanic Temple, if you've never heard of it. Yeah. They, they, are, they are a group of, of people who basically come out to show you why the separation of church and state is necessary. Because whatever y'all do, say, I, I think it was a situation where they were trying to... Uh, erect monuments or something in front of public schools uh <clears throat> like holy or religious monuments in front of uh, public schools and all of the christians and stuff yeah we we're okay with that jesus being in front yeah they were fine and everybody mm -hmm. was like no this is not a good thing because of church and state and you know and all of the christians were fine with it until the satanic temple erected a statue of Satan in front of a Christian, in front of a Christian school, and then everybody lost their minds. <laughs> and and it wasn't even that they believed in Satan, but they did it to show you that this can happen. Now that you've opened the door for this, mm -hmm. not it doesn't only <laughs> count for your religion. That's the that's the part that y'all are missing. That's the part mm -hmm. that everybody is missing. Is that if you open this door. That means Muslims can do this. That means uh, the Jewish can do this. Uh, Buddhists can do this. Hindus can do this. <laughs> Even people who worship Satan. Hail Satan, Lord of all that we can see. That's the point of this. Would you be okay with somebody getting down on the 50 yard line and drawing a pentagram and saying, oh, lo oh Lord Lucifer, please come down and bless this, this football field. Would you be all right with that? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Right. So this needs to stay where it is. Because freedom for, 
for one religion is freedom for all of them. And that's that. Nice. But thank you all for listening to our ramblings. Check us out again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We know that y'all out there. Y'all watching our videos. So just, you know, help us out. You know, do that. Likes are free. You have an infinite number of them. <laughs> but I'm your host, B Ryder. My co host, J Bell. And this has been Final Thoughts. Thoughts.